screw the art. Screw the art. It's all about the gear. It's all about the gear. Now, Gear Iguana, that is not a very nice thing to say to my audience. Shut up! <laughs> yes, this is what it's come to. I am now reduced to using puppets on pal to tech Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech As you're out shooting photos, light is reflecting off of all kinds of different surfaces at different color temperatures. These color temperatures affect the appearance of light and they're measured in degrees Kelvin, ranging from around 1000 Kelvin all the way up to about 10,000 Kelvin. Okay, this bulb is 2700 Kelvin. This bulb is 5,000 Kelvin. Basically, as a frame of reference for you, the midday sunshine is about 5,500 Kelvin. Now, that's roughly also the same color temperature as common speed lights. The problem is, your camera is kind of stupid. What you want to be doing is to tell your Fujifilm camera that this is, in fact, a neutral white piece of paper. It's not red. In your Fujifilm camera settings menu, under IQ, you have white balance. There's automatic, plus three custom white balance settings, and then some prefabricated settings for various common shooting scenarios. Each of these various presets allow you to dig deeper and fine tune the various color temperatures. I don't use any of these preset ones other than the Kelvin color temperature from time to time. What I do 99% of the time is set a custom white balance. And to help in this example, we will bring our friend back Gear Iguana. Okay, so I'm gonna take Gear Iguana and place him right here on this keyboard. Okay, perfect. And let's change the film sim to vivid, you know, to bring out those colors. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is set a custom white balance. IQ, white balance, you go into custom, and then it has a white square, which you then need to take a piece of white paper and make sure that it completely sort of blocks the square, just like that. And try and put it as close to your actual scene subject as possible. Press the shutter, boom, up, oh, over. Good, I'm glad I got that error for you. That means your image is overexposed and you need to kind of lower down the light coming into it a little bit and then try it again. Custom, let's take another picture. There we go, there we go, have a look at this. And then of course, all of the different film sims will be balanced with that custom white balance that we just set. And I can take my awesome photo of Gear Iguana. Now, for my next set of photos, I warmed up the lighting by adding portable lights with a warmer color temperature. I then took this shot right here with the camera set on auto white balance. As you can see, the white of the Pokemon ball is not really white. It's kind of a yellow. In this second photo, I did the custom white balance that I showed you. Because I gave the camera a white neutral reference point that it will use to base all of its color decisions off of, all of the other colors in the photo fell into place and look great. Look at that Pokeball. Check out those color squares. Now, I mentioned before that you can correct white balance in RAW files post-production. To do it in Lightroom, you just click on the little dropper, go over, find a neutral color, and boom, done. In Capture One, more or less of the same thing, click on the little dropper in your white balance tab area, and boom. If you're shooting RAW files, setting a custom white balance is not as critical because yeah, you can always change it in post. However, I still think that you should always get in the habit of getting the scene correct in camera. That means the lighting, the focus, and yes, the color balance. And in some cases, even your RAW files will benefit from getting the color balance correct in camera versus trying to adjust it after the fact. If you're shooting JPEGs only, <sighs> then you better start paying attention to your color balance. Consider getting a gray card or, you know, one of these thingies, right? Or you can get the passport color checker, which I find to be very handy. Or last but not least, just carry some white paper around with you. If you're shooting video, you should almost never shoot with auto white balance. It's a nightmare to try and adjust shifting color balance in video, which if you leave the camera on auto white balance will change its color temperature 
reference from scene to scene. Lighting color temperature to lighting color temperature. Even if you pick a random preset color balance and apply that, that would actually be better than auto white balance because you can then have something consistent to work with in post-production. Well, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please consider giving it the like and subscribe. And I am thinking about doing another live stream. Maybe in time for the 25,000 subscriber celebration thingy. I don't know. I just think it would be fun to do a live stream again. Well, that's about it. Have a great weekend. Get out there. Shoot some awesome photos. Don't forget your exposure. Don't forget your focus. And don't forget your white balance. I'll see you soon. Take care. Gear, 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 g